Hello, and greetings to all you fans of RPGs and Dungeons and Dragons. In this video, I will be reviewing and discussing the Dungeons and Dragons module A1 Slave Pets of the Undersea, which was written by David Cook and originally published by TSR in October of 1980. The module was meant for player characters between the levels of 4 through 7. This module was written for AD&D 1st edition rules. The Dungeon Master will need to do some work in order to convert it to 5th edition rules. The module's cover describes the adventure contained within as follows. It is time to put a stop to the Marauders. For years, the coastal towns have been burned and looted by the forces of evil. You and your fellow adventurers have been recruited to root out and destroy the source of these raids. But beware, hundreds of good men and women have been taken by the slavers and have never been seen or heard from again. The A1 module was followed by three more modules, A2, Secret of the Slaver's Stockade, A3, Assault on the Airy of the Slave Lords, and A4, In the Dungeons of the Slave Lords. Including the A1 module, each of these modules were originally tournament modules played at Gen Con game fairs before being expanded and then published. The A1 Slave Pits of the Undercity module was also included in two compilations. First in 1986 with Scourge of the Slave Lords, then again in 2013 with Against the Slave Lords. This adventure takes place on the fantasy world of Greyhawk, specifically in the nefarious city of Highport within the Orcish kingdom of Pamarsh. Highport was once a human city before being raised and conquered by orcs, ogres, gnolls, and other goblinoid creatures. There are still humans in the city but they are either outcasts or the unsavory types. Some modifications are needed by the Dungeon Master if they plan on running this module in the Forgotten Realms. Possible locations include Chacenta, Treshkel, or Thay. All these suggested locations fall on the eastern side of the Sea of Fallen Stars. The module begins outside the walls of a ruined temple compound, which is within the city of Highport. As far as plot hook, the module gives the following explanation. For several years, organized bands of pirates and slavers have been raiding the coastal towns on the Sea of Girnat. They have descended quickly and ruthlessly on the small towns and villages and carried off innocent citizens. The lords of the raided towns and villages have traced the slavers to the despoiled city of Highport. They have gathered several bands of adventurers and tasked them to infiltrate the slavers' base and destroy their leaders. Your party of player characters are just one of many bands of adventurers trying to infiltrate and destroy the slave lord's operations. With this plot hook in mind, the dungeon master should also keep in mind that there are other bands of adventurers that are in Highport. As a DM, I like to keep these bands of adventurers acting in the background and out of sight. If the party of the player characters get into trouble 
that they cannot overcome, I would then bring in one of these bands to the rescue. For stats and names, I would use the pre-made tournament characters located on the end pages of the module's booklet. Anyway, somehow the player characters are the ones that found the right leads and information that brought them to a ruined temple. After the A1 module was published, years later there were two prequel adventures made for it. The first is Danger at Dark Shelf Quarry, which is also known as Module A0, followed by Lowdown in Highport, both of which I have already discussed in my previous two videos. The module, nor the series as a whole, seriously touch on the subject matter of slavery. And, no matter what form it takes, how evil of an institution it is. It does not describe the slaves' living conditions, diets, torture, abuse, nor their physical and mental states. Given the controversial nature of the subject matter, it is no wonder that the module is avoiding giving any details or making a political statement. Anyway, I better move on before I draw analogies of it in our own modern day and age. As River Song from the Doctor Who series would say, spoilers! I will now be discussing the module itself and this video will contain spoilers. Unless you are a dungeon master who will be running this module for their players, or are a player who already played through this module and are watching this video for nostalgia purposes, I would suggest not to watch the rest of this video. There are two main enemy leaders in the module. One is a sixth-level human female cleric. The other is a seventh-level human male thief. Both are not given names or much description. However, in the Scourge of the Slave Lords compilation, the seventh-level thief is given the name of Strom Buckholtz. To me, what makes a D&D module come alive is when the villain is provided a background and a personality, which is why I love the module I-6 Ravenloft so much. Hence, to the DM, I would suggest that they give these villains some background and personality. Perhaps before heading to the Ruined Temple, the player characters spend some time in the seedy city of Highport, where they may bump into the villains of the module and have a chance to interact with them. Also, to add excitement and motivation, as part of a prequel to this module, I would have a non-player character that the player characters know and like be captured by the slavers. This should give the characters the additional motivation to bring an end to the slave lord's operations. The module is split into two parts. The first part is the upper part which is the Ruined Temple area. The second part is the Sewers level. The characters can play this as a dungeon crawl, but they will need to be stealthy at the same time. Or they could seek out other avenues, such as posing as buyers or even try to join with the slavers. But this module was meant to be a dungeon crawl, and not much detail was provided for the DM to run it outside those parameters. The most common complaint of the module is that its layout, design, and placement of monsters do not make any logical sense. As I stated earlier, this module was originally a tournament module. 
which means emphasis was placed on a sequence of events, puzzles, and traps, and monster encounters, rather than on the setting and layout. The ruined temple, with its sewers below, is being used as a slave depot in the middle of a ruined and monster-infested city of Highport. Unfortunately, the module does not provide any details or maps of Highport. Hence, a thorough dungeon master has a lot of work on his or her hands to fill in such details. As a side note, the module hardly has any traps and or puzzles in the traditional sense. Instead, it has hazards that the characters will need to figure out how to overcome. Such as a room where the floor is almost entirely gutted. The floor lies 30 feet below. At first glance, it seems that there are three possible ways to walk across the room a charred and crumbling section of the floor that clings to the left wall, a narrow pathway of fallen beams stretched across the center like a bridge, and a sunder section of floor only burned at the edge runs along the right wall. Although it will creak and groan, Turns out that the safest path is the wooden beams. The ruined temple environs contain a couple of garden areas, some ruined areas, stables, and a gatehouse. Denizens of the ruined temple area include orcs, half orcs, basilisks, harpies, sturges, a right, and a sundew which is a new monster. There is even a doppelganger who will probably pose as an escaped slave. In addition, there is a false slaver's lair where there are half-orcs posing as human slaves. Any new buyers of the slaves are brought to this room and observed very carefully for their reactions. It is only when the slavers feel sure about the buyers that they will then will be taken to the actual slave pens. The six-level human female cleric villain is located in an inner temple chamber and, of course, has several guards with her. Within her chamber is a trap door that leads to the sewers below. The sewer levels contains an Aspies colony. Aspies are new creatures that are giant ant-like insects. Outside the colony area, an orc tribe makes its home here as well. There are also ogres and other creatures that can be found within this level. Further along, the characters will find six-inch beams crisscrossing above a large set of open slave pens. To pass through the area, they will have to battle a few aspies that guard the pens and these aspies have excellent balance on these beams. This is probably the most memorable encounter of the module. Even though they have a human master, orcs run the slaver operations in the sewers level of the module. In the main slave chamber are three humans looking to buy slaves which makes for an interesting encounter. One of them carries a caravan map to their next location, which is where the next module A2, Secret of the Slaver's Stockade, takes place. Finally, 
there is the classic tilting stairway that drops the characters into the final showdown area. The final boss, the 7th level thief, aka Strom Buckholtz, with his guards, is located in a circular chamber with a moat of sewage surrounding a bare platform in the center. The only thing linking this module with the next in the series is a map the player characters can find that shows the location of a slaver base within the Track Hansgrab Hills, which lies south of Highport City. If you plan on using the A2 module next, then as a DM I would also add some incriminating documents for the player characters to find of the slaver's operations, instead of just having one map to go by, such as financial records, shipment logs, etc. The module has two new creatures. First are the Aspies, which are basically giant ant-like insects. The second new creature is a sundew, which is an almost sentient plant with a very sticky sap. As stated earlier, the module was published in 1980. As trivia, that was the first year in which TSR included box text to be read out loud by the Dungeon Master to the player characters to describe what the characters see, hear, and smell when they first enter a room or area. This made life easier for DMs since they now know what information they can readily divulge to the player characters and what information to withhold. The module contains some decent treasure, but nothing epic or legendary. For me, the most notable items were Gauntlets of Dexterity, Ring of Spell Storing, and Stone of Diminution. Other than a plus two Ring of Protection, the final boss did not have any magical weapons or armor, your player characters may find this treasure pathetic for a final boss to be carrying. Hence, a DM may wish to remedy this. The drawings, maps, and art of the module were done by Jeff D., David S. LaForce, Jim Rosloff, and Bill Willingham. The A1 Slave Pits of the Undercity module is available for purchase on the drive through RPG website. The module is also part of the Against the Slave Lords compilation, which is also available for purchase on the drive through RPG website. Thank you for watching. Hope this video has been informative and entertaining. I love many types of role-playing games, especially Dungeons & Dragons. Inclusive of my wayward love are computer role-playing games, such as Divinity Original Sin 1 and 2, the first two Dragon Age games, Baldur's Gate, and a few others. In the foreseeable future for this channel, I plan on continuing to review the Dungeons & Dragons modules in more or less alphabetical order of their mod codes. Till next time, this is RPG Mods Fan saying cheers, have a good day, and goodbye.
always feel the same. They say we're lost without aim. Today the stars will be red. Soon blue will guide us instead. My lucky stars will. Stay in this moment. 